So first, thank you for inviting me. Um, I think I'm a little bit different. I'm more or less a gardener. And I'm going to talk about what we started a couple of years ago, and which is now called the International Conservation Collection of Coffee Varieties. First, for you to understand what we are and who we are, um, the Wehelma is a zoological botanical garden in Stuttgart. It was founded by King Wilhelm of Württemberg in 1846, and it's now part of the Ministry of Finance. So we are just completely independent from industry, um, whatever we do, um, which is important for our collection. Um, we cover an area of uh, 30 hectares, and we are holding about 1,200 animal and 8,500 plant species. Um, a couple of years ago, we um, thought that we should take care of a special group of plants. There was a long history from the king um, in agriculture, and we were thinking what to do. And then we met Stefan, and together we had the idea um, to start to collect coffee. So um, our aim is quite easy. Um, we want to collect and preserve as much coffee cultivars for the following generation as possible. The collection is based on the trust and support of the coffee farmer all over the world, because the coffee farmer give the varieties to us. All partners should be able to exchange knowledge about their cultivars and have a backup of living spe uh, specimens in Stuttgart so if they lose plants by pest or natural disaster. And in times of climate change, they may even try new cultivars from other farmers. So if there's an exchange and the climate is changing on your plantation, maybe someone else has got experience and can give you um, another variety. In addition, I'm also a scientist. Our collection might be the ultimate resource for all studies dealing with sensorial or aroma profiles. I'm going to talk about this later on, of different coffee cultivars. Because all our plants are grown under similar condition. Another option is the permanent availability of 115 different coffee varieties for genetic studies. For example, to generate a family tree or to find a fingerprint to identify varieties, wherever they are. So how does uh, the collection look like? As I told you, at the moment we've got 115 accessions of coffee. It's coffee Arabica, coffee Bengalensis, Canephora, and Liberica, but the majority are varieties of Coffea Arabica. Um, before I continue, one thing, a variety, in fact, in German would be a wrong word. As a scientist, varieties always grow in the wilderness. They are real species. We are, in fact, talking and collecting cultivars, but the problem is nobody in Germany ever talks about coffee cultivars if he's talking about boba or um, other varieties. So we decided, even if it's scientifically wrong, to use variety for our collection. From every accession, uh, we keep three plants. We started with four plants, but we're running out of space. So we had to reduce to three plants. Um, one plant uh, is allowed to get big, um, about this size, the older ones, about up to three meters, um, and we have them just to harvest the cherries and for exhibition to show how the shrubs, the plants, look like. The other two plants are kept much smaller. We keep them just for the genetic um, resource. Um, and you can see we've got a complete greenhouse just full of these plants. But even the small plants um, set on fruits. So these are pictures from our collection where you can see Arabica, Anacafe, Amarello, 
Akai, Katuai, Vermelo, and Amarello, and Obata. So they set fruits, um, which is very important for our visitors, because I told you we are also a botanical garden, and we should never grow plants which are boring to the visitors. And coffee, um, coffee has nice colors and a lot of stories to tell. And for us, it's always important to tell a story about our plants. So um, the collection is behind the scenes. Um, and once a year, if the plants are um, set on fruits, we bring them to the official part so that the visitor can see them. Um, behind this, there's a data bench because you can just work with the plants um, if you have got all um, data you need. And therefore, we knew, uh, use the international plant exchange network called IPEN. This is a system which all botanical gardens worldwide use um, to identify each plant species in the botanical garden. So if you or some of you send some seeds to us from a new variety, we generate such a code where you can see at the beginning there is a double X. This means that the origin is unknown. In our collection, we always say it's unknown because of Nagoya. I'm going to tell you this later on. Um, then there is a zero, or there might also be one. One would mean that the species is protected um, by CETES. It's endangered, for example. This is never the case with our coffee. Then there's a shortcut for Stuttgart for the botanical garden and an identification number which we create. And these code always keeps together with the plants, for example, with this plant, wherever the plant moves. So if we would give a plant, for example, to the botanical garden of New York, um, the code moves to New York. The reason behind this is quite easy because um, you all know um, cacao plants. Um, and scientists always had been sure that cacao is safe for mankind because every botanical garden in the world is growing cacao plants. Um, then they did some genetical research and they found out that it was just one clone because uh, cacao had been brought to Europe and it grows very well and they collected seeds and they shared it with all the other gardens. And for hundreds of years, they had just been sending around the same um, genotype. So this should never be happening. For this reason, they created this system because behind this number, you can find all the facts about these special plants. So for example, you see under this number, it's Coffea arabica, it's the cultivar uva. The origin is the Facenta Dutra in Brazil. We've got the GPS, where the seeds had been collected. We've got the date when we received the plant. You can see it was March 2016. We have got the name of the collector, in this case, the Dutra brothers. And if we've got further information, we also keep it, for example, in this case, um, we know that it's a cross between Sarchimor and Red Katuai. So what we would offer in our collection is we have unique research condition because we have equal soil, equal water, equal light, equal temperature, even equal height among um, sea level, equal pest control, and even the gardener who is caring about the plant is always the same person. So if you collect the, the cherries, for example, or the flowers, any different in morphology, in yield, in ingredients, in smell and taste, if the beans are um, roasted in the same way, is only based on the variety. So it's the first time where you could really um, do a very close research. And we guarantee a very healthy, isolated population because we are far away from every tropical island. Most um, 
most diseases um, need special climate conditions. But in our greenhouse, we can control this, and we work very close together, for example, here with the um, te technology center, Augustenberg, even from the government. And whenever we find something like here, Xylella fastidosa, we can check the plants for free, and so always can guarantee, as you can see here on the right-hand side, it was negative, that um, the plants are not infected by any disease. The project um, lives from its partner. Um, we had been discussing a lot about industry and about pharma, and our aim was we want to be as close as possible to the farmer. The project is not for industry. The project is for the farmer. It should be a platform. Um, and also for people which are just interested in coffee or live in coffee, like Stefan do. Um, so what you can be is, first you can get a donor. Donor means that you have got um, coffee, like here the Facendra Dutra in Brazil, the Heredad Korea in Colombia, Finca Hamburg in Mexico, Buena Esperanza in El Salvador, Batras in India, or Rekia Yaya Plantation in Malaysia, and on the map, wherever you can see a spot, there's a farm which is cooperating with our project. So if you want to become a donor, um, you have to bring on coffee varieties. On the other hand, you receive a certificate um, with the logo of the Ministry of Food, Rural Affairs and Consumer Projection in Baden-Württemberg which is very valuable for the farmer because they have an official sheet of the government of Germany. And they receive a business card as being an official representative of the project. So for them, it's much easier with the local government to deal, to send seeds or anything else. Um, they can get in contact with other project partners to exchange knowledge and experience. And they can always receive living plant material from our collection if they want to try something new. Um, for example, this is the latest farm which joins our project is the Finca Heredad Korea. And even there we collect all the data which are available so it's in Antioquia, Lano Grande, Colombia. Again, we have the GPS. We have the altitude where you can see it's the highest coffee plantation in Colombia um, with 2,300 meters above sea level. They have five hectares and they gave the variety Castillo, Hiroso, Geni Cafe, Colombia and Gesha to the project. If you want to join, you have to guarantee sustainability. Um, so the people should get uh, well paid, um, and even nature should have a place. Um, so on most of the farm, there are remaining parts of the rainforest, or for example, they use um, a native rainforest tree as a natural shadow for the plantation. But most people here, they do not have a coffee farm. So if you sadly don't have a coffee farm and you want to join the project, there's always a possibility because all of you have got special skills. So you can support the project as a sponsor by giving your skills to the project. For example, as a photographer, as you can see here, photo design Zierman, we get the pictures for free as a scientist, um, for example here, Identix, Applied Molecular Biotechnology. They had been working for a couple of years on a um, family tree, genetic, for coffee. But they had to stop two years ago. I'm going to talk about this later on. Or even as a roaster. Um, we are supported by the Neckar Rösterei. As you can see, we've got um, our, our own coffee. And uh, 
the story behind this is um, quite interesting because on the on the coffee you can see a picture. This picture is of um, the last king of Württemberg, and as I told you, we are just living in tradition of this king in the Wilhelma, and um, the family of the king is still alive, um, and they gave us the permission for the project to use the picture of uh, the king um, for our coffee. Um, and if you would be a politician, this would be very important for us. So on this place, there could be your picture. I hope that there would have come many politicians, but I can't see them around here, sadly, because um, we've got big problem with our project at the moment. As I told you, we would be unique for any kind of research. We are open for everything. Um, and this worked well um, until March 2021. This was the last project which had been carried out, um, again, with the University of Hohenheim. You hear it uh, from the university today. But then, everything was rejected. Um, and it was rejected because of the Nagoya Protocol. So, I think most of you know the Nagoya Protocol. It's called Nagoya Protocol on Access to Genetic Resources and the Fair and Equitable Sharing of Benefits Arising from Their Utilization. So in fact, it's a good idea because um, it should help even smaller countries um, with the her heritage of native plants, native animals, and protect them. But for our coffee collection, it's a really big problem because we are no longer allowed to do any research with coffee. As I told you before, in fact, our varieties are cultivars. So they are not taken from the wilderness. And we thought there should be an exception, but um, the government decided no. Um, Coffee belongs to this. And if you look at this, these are all the countries which had um, signed um, Nagoya Protocol. Among them are most of the coffee producing countries. So the government um, sent us a writing, I left it in German. Um, they say that it's fantastic what we do, it's a fantastic collection. But sadly, we are no longer allowed to do any research because of access and benefit sharing. We have to ask in the origin country of every variety. So and everybody from you who is working with coffee knows that the origin of coffee varieties is just impossible because it's a very long history. I call it the Bourbon question. Because if you talk about Bourbon, for example, um, it's a very old variety. And as you can see, probably it came from Yemen to Bourbon. Then in the mid of the 18th century, it spreads in a new world. Um, it was introduced to Brazil and then um, to Central America. It, today, it's still grown in El Salvador, in Guatemala, Honduras, Peru, and even in Rwanda and Kenya. So where do we have to ask? Should we find out the most origin place? Then we should get a permission to Yemen. But from Yemen, we would never get a permission. Then do we have to ask in every country where the variety is grown? This doesn't make any sense. Um, and we are discussing about this for a long time, but until now, there's really no result. But then we said, ha, there's a solution. Because um, even politicians realize that this doesn't make any sense. Because many plants are important for mankind. And so they decided that there should be an international treaty of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture. And they said, the 64 most important plants for mankind um, 
should get an exception. And the ex exception came. And as you can see, there are many, many plant species which got the exception, for example, oat, lemon, or strawberry, but even plants like breadfruit, um, which for me doesn't seem to be really most important for mankind. But there's no exception for coffee, because coffee doesn't seem to be important. Um, and this is the place where I would love to have the picture of the politician who is going to solve this problem for us. And this is already the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Schaeffer. Now we open for questions or comments. You can also volunteer to be on the picture. Yeah. <laughs> I just have a short question. Why is coffee not included in this treaty? international treaty. Who made this treaty or how was it made? And who was consulted or not consulted? I do not know. I wasn't part. It's just the answer I get if I ask. And it's quite interesting because Stefan told me that, um, that um, in France um, it should be possible to work with the varieties. Is it right? I will just accidentally and just, just by coincidence walk to a person, stop suddenly. Thank, thank you, thank you. Um, I don't know how to start because I, there's yeah. a lot to say. Yeah? Uh, first, the, the, uh, the parties to those treaties yeah. and protocols are the governments. Yeah. So uh, who decided? Basically, those are the governments. Also, the, the representative of the governments. Now, uh, I don't know your specific uh, yeah. uh, situation with the government of, of Germany. I don't think it is different in France. Okay. In fact, the Nagoya Protocol does not prevent um, to work and to introduce some plans. It just gives good practices to do that. And in coffee. If you're talking, uh, everybody will tell about Ethiopia, for example, which yeah. is important. No, but Ethiopia, they will not share. They will. Ethiopia was one of the government, the most involved in the Nagoya Protocol. Yeah. And they have mechanisms in place. They, you've got the Inst Institute of uh, uh, Biodiversity. Uh, I have uh, lucky enough to have some uh, uh, friends and contacts over there. Uh, which does not mean I get, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but which means that, in fact, there is a procedure, that a process that can be long, that can be annoying, but that exists. So, uh, as long as uh, you 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 take the time yeah. to go to all, and it is a, it is it is a, there's a lot of people not doing it just because it will require a lot of effort, perseverance, because you will not get answers, you will need to insist. Stuff. But it is possible. So what I understand from your presentation is that uh, the government in Germany said, OK, you just stop. So we are, we are just allowed um, to hold the collection. So the collection could also get bigger. This is no problem. But um, just to hold it and uh, no research um, and anything else. Okay, so in, in, the, uh, in the Nagoya Protocol, in yeah. the, the good practice, maybe you've heard, the first thing you should do if you want to do research is a prior informed consent, PIC, yeah. with the provider. The provider is not necessarily the country of origin. The provider is anyone having in his possession uh, the, uh, the coffee in question. Uh, so, for example, uh, it might be Catier in Costa Rica. Yeah. It might be uh, Le Centre National de Recherche Agronomique in Ivory Coast. Yeah. They have uh, uh, 
they have uh, coffees from all over the world. So if uh, you go to them, it's possible to get the, uh, the material. You will sign an MTA, of course, and if you do research, you will have to have a prior inform um, the year before, uh, before starting uh, with, with the country of origin. And yeah. that's where it becomes a little bit tricky because you will need to send a, a letter to Mozambique to the resource person in Mozambique for the Nagoya, which is easy to find on the net. Yeah. You will need to f send a letter, say, oh, I am getting uh, Racemosa and I would like to look at the chemical composition of the beans. Do you agree, yes or no? The thing is that most likely you will never receive an answer. Yeah, or, or, the, I'm sorry, problem, I'm, yeah. I'm just talking Mozambique as an example, but it could be any other country. So, but at least you've done your due diligence. So, I mean, it's not as blocked as it might uh, uh, seem. That's what I, uh, uh, I want to say. And as I have got the mic, uh, yes. I, I had another question, if you allow me, uh, uh, yes. Adriana, is that actually I just mentioned uh, uh, Catier in Costa Rica, yes. uh, Senera in Ivory Coast. Also, uh, uh, there is the Crop Trust uh, in, the, in this landscape of uh, genetic conservation. And I know for sure that Catier has an agreement uh, to consider the plants that are in Catier right now as not, they are not on the list of the, but it is managed as if it was part of the multilateral system, the, uh, okay. the plant treaty. Uh, so basically what is in Catier, it's not under Nagoya protocol, but you can choose to, to, to act as if it were. And with the Ivory Coast, yeah, it is in, in course to be uh, the same. Uh, okay, I yeah. think I'll, uh, I've got... Uh, we can, we can, we can, we can, can talk later. later on. Uh, okay, <laughs> thank you.